soundless make me very nervous. But not as nervous as the court. No, I suppose not. Why can't Great be more like Silvari? Common likes Silvari. Crates are mean and ugly. Silvari are pretty and cool. Pretty, yes, but very small. Quagin worries about smooshing them by accident. Doesn't water get the flames were beautiful. They looked like autumn leaves, red and gold, rattling as the wind tore through them, breaking free and whirling into the sky. The village was flying away. Thatch and wattle and rafters all were going up in ash. Kaith watched the village and the villagers burn. She was too late. Everything was fire. Still, it was beautiful. Kaith, Silvari of the Firstborn, dropped down from the boulder where she had crouched and stalked slowly into the burning village. Like all of her people, Kaith was slender and lithe, the child of a great tree in a sacred grove. She was one with the natural world. Even her travel leathers bore the vine motifs of her homeland. Kaith pushed silvery hair back from her wide eyes, watching for signs of life in the burning village. Only the flames lived. She listened for voices, but only the fire spoke. Kaith didn't fear the fire. She was young and strong, voracious and indomitable and curious, just like fire. It had drawn her here. It was interesting. Who had started it? How? Why? What had this village been called? I love a bonfire, came a voice, deep and dark, feminine and familiar. Kaith turned to see a Silvari woman garbed in a black orchid gown, as if this were some fancy ball. Kaith's eyes narrowed. What are you doing here, Fowlane? Fowlane gave the suffering smile of an addict. The fires drew me. A moth to a flame, just like you. Well, welcome guys to Cara Flower's la well, not really last day, but one of her last days uh, for the early story in the Grove before she heads out onto a large wide adventure across the rest of Tyria. Uh, now, it's not true that this is the very end of the Grove. By the way, look how cool these uh, rooty little tunnels and areas are. I wanted to show this off because the Grove's got a lot of places that we haven't explored yet. It's not really the last time we'll be here. The later stories do have you frequently come back and for very good reason. But, uh, yeah, for a while, uh, this will be it. So we're uh, going to wrap up a couple of, couple of little features and things I haven't talked about yet. First of all, with regard to Grove Exploration, the Grove, a little bit like Ratasum, is uh, kind of funny in that when the game released, the devs hinted at a ton of areas that you can never really explore. Now, later, when we unlock all kinds of new capabilities like gliding and mounts and things, uh, we can kind of sneakily do it, but there's no real content there. So places like this, Sea Watcher's Ledge, we have no idea what that really is. The Sea Rider's Gate, we have no idea. Privet Gardens, you can sort of get close and see some Silvari building towards it, but there's nothing really there. Necrolith uh, Bay, it's mostly all just here, plus the Caledon Path, so that's kind of curious. But that doesn't mean that we've seen everything within that ring, uh, and in particular, just beyond those lily pads is something quite cool. Down here on the bottom, there are houses, you've been listening to lots of the ambient dialogue for them, houses for each of the cycles. So like, there's the house of dawn, there's the house of dusk, and so on. But there are even houses for the various firstborn that still live and frequent this area of the world. And so as we walk close to this one, you'll see that we actually have the house of Kaith. Uh, there's an NPC out here who, by the way, is very interesting. She says, curse that betrayer. Stand back, please. My anger is in full bloom and my thorns may prick anyone in proximity. We say, what's happened? Who is this betrayer? She says, Sandhatch, seducer of my soul's heart. He calls himself the Knight of Avarice now. He bewitched me to help him and used me to secure his place in the court of nightmares. Wow, how did he bewitch you? 
For months he whispered his love for me. He made my blood rush like a raging river. And I have never before felt such devotion and faith. We hear the word blood quite a lot when it comes to Savari. Remember, we're not actually talking about blood as you'd know in mammals. It's more like a sappy kind of substance, I suppose. They are plants after all. Uh, and he abused your love? To be uh, initiated in the court, he had to seduce and use an innocent to deliver a new seedling to be corrupted. There's more, but I tremble to share it with anyone. And uh, as a high dignity level person, I suppose might have been the idea behind this once upon a time. Uh, we can get the extra information. We say, I promise to listen discreetly and without judgment. And she goes on and says, you have a kindness about you. Very well. Santach told me he wished to meet one of the newest crop of seedlings. Didn't you think to ask what he wanted, we say? And she says, I was swept away by my desire for him. I would have hunted the moon for him, had he but asked. When I brought one of the newly awakened to him, he revealed his true nature. What did we do? Uh, sorry, what did he do? He hit me so hard I fell into a dreamless sleep. And when I awoke, he and the seedling were gone. I can only imagine what he did to the poor innocent. It's very sad. So, yeah, a little bit of an example of what the nightmare court are up to. Uh, and, yeah, so the House of Kate, I do want to come in and show you guys. You get a bit of lore by coming in. Kaith is one of the firstborn, the first Silvari who sprung from the fruit of the pale tree. She wanders Tyria, but when she is in the grove, she is usually found here. So here we are. Uh, we are now in an instance. If you turn around, you'll see it still just looks like the grove. But as we walk towards the door now, it opens for us. And we can find that Kaith is in here, uh, chilling out. She says, hello, Valiant. I hope you don't need me. I'm right in the middle of something. Talk to you later. What are you doing, we, we say. And she says, blending poison for my blades. I'm no Hylic alchemist, but I do fine. Interesting. Talk to you later. Interestingly here, she says, hello, Valiant. That is only because we are Silvari. If we were anything else, she would actually use our our player character's name. She'd say, hello, Caraflower. Just a kind of a tiny little uh, thing there for you. But yeah, so she's got a trunk that it looks like she's packing uh, down here. And over here, we get two different things we can interact with. There's an open book, a journal of some sort, it seems. This book is well-worn and contains almost illegible notes in the margins. Someone wedged a folded piece of paper between the pages. We can examine the piece of paper. And it says the paper is of rough linen, folded into a bookmark. And it's blank. So that's a bit of a strange curiosity. Examining the book further. The book was made with modern Crichton binding techniques. The title embossed on the spine reads, Long Distance Relationships, 10 Ways to Make It Work. Huh. Here we have a bookshelf. This bookshelf holds an eclectic con collection of items. Everything from treatises on ancient Crichton lore to Assyrian theories on Silvari metabolism. The tomes are fastidiously arranged in order. So here we can learn how Kaith, as one of the firstborn, a lot of other Silvari are probably privileged of knowing a lot the second they come into the world, but maybe Kaith as a firstborn wouldn't have so much. And she, she maybe the firstborn above all understands that they need to read books and things to keep their learning going. This is a nice little area in our house. And finally, over here, I'm not quite sure why this is here, but there is a Silvari lamp, which we can press F on. And uh, it actually does flare up and light uh, our way, which is really quite pretty. I kind of want them to add that to guild halls. Eventually, we will get to those and show those off. Uh, that would be kind of a fun thing as a decoration for us as players to use. But there you go. So that's Kate's house. Now, that's not all. If we um, go back as well, I did want to show you a bit of our home instance, which is just across the road, funnily enough, from Kate's house. And there are some other ones if we did the whole perimeter. Um, so yeah, back to our home. First of all, there is a little bit of lore that the game used to give us on loading screens as we enter the home, which I really want to read to you guys. Beneath the protective leaves of the pale tree, each Silvari has one piece of ground that they are particularly comfortable in. Here you get the concept art for our home, which also I don't think you guys saw yet. And now you can kind of get a little bit more of a sen sense of all the crazy stuff that can go on here. All the various pickups, uh, because we haven't seen this at all. I think for all the other races, we have seen a version of our home when all the pickups have been enabled and all the different NPCs are walking around with. It's not a part of the story. And, uh, well, Caraflower deserves that too. So you've got uh, a real ton of things. There's one item that I don't have unlocked. One. Uh, and it would be here, uh, but that is from the most recent patch for the game, which I just haven't quite got it yet. Uh, but look, ch check it out. Gerwin's here. Greetings. It doesn't have any uh, unique dialogue for us. Here's a, uh, a an actual thing we can attack. This is kind of funny. I don't know how many Silvari target dummies are in the game that you can attack, but this is certainly one that you could totally blow it off as well. Uh, and yeah, you can kind of wander around and see what's going. Now, you'll also notice a really funny Easter egg, okay, uh, that there's a ton of cats around. So... 
Cats are a thing in the game where you can do all kinds of crazy scavenger hunts and item puzzles and things and unlock cats. Each of these cats you see, and I really do mean each of them, every single one, I've painstakingly traveled around Tyria finding and coaxing them to come back to my home. And there's loads of different types. Here's a snow leopard. There's loads of them, okay? Now, uh, it's kind of a fun feature. I have a series of videos on it if you guys really want to check it out. Again, doing that co-op. Uh, and Lara's at our home here as well. Lara. Hello. That's kind of cool. I wonder why she came here. Um, now, if you don't really like cats, but you've done the quest, there is a thing you can unlock called the uh, Feline Dispersing Resonator, which I've already done. Since you can only do it once on account, it won't appear in the LP. Again, it's on that series. But if I activate this, what it will do is it will make all the cats that have really cluttered this area up uh, run away. The, the cats won't be interested in hanging around here anymore. Now, there's a fun extra part... Look, they've even brought a dead bird into the home. That's brilliant for today. Now, there's an extra fun side to all of this, um, where if we go back now, only for the Silvari this happens, by the way, to Kate's house, something curious will have happened. With all of the felines uh, dispersed from my house, where do they choose to go? <laughs> they come to Kate's! And they create just hell and nastiness and a mess. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a funny thing I've never talked about. I only recently learned about. But, yeah, so you can actually to spam Kate, the poor lady, with all of the cats should you not like them. Uh, which is kind of really, really, really cool and a very, very awesome detail uh, that got added to the game quite recently. Kate herself, you'll see, is here and doesn't seem to care about the cats. Kate comes and goes a lot from her home. Uh, so, depending on how far through the story you get, you won't necessarily always find her there when you go to visit. Maybe we'll demonstrate that at some point as well. As I said, the story will bring us back, um, so yeah. Alright, there you go. That's sort of the, uh, extra stuff before we get into the story. One final thing just before we go to speak to the members of the Order here. I did want to talk a bit about death magic again. So, yesterday, remember, we get tankier in shrouds. We get more life force and soul power off of people who die near us. We give everyone protection when we leave Shroud, and now we get the major traits to pick. So I'm just going to talk you through the first one here. Flesh of the Master. This was the name of a Guild Wars 1 skill that meant you sacrificed your own health to enhance your uh, allies. Well, check it out. We're going to pick this up. Minions have increased health. We also gain bonus toughness for every single minion we control. That's 50% more health. So when I summon my Blood Fiend... Arise and do my best. He himself now is way tankier. But also, if you look at my bar, I've got this buff here, the Flesh of the Master. And I've now got increased tankiness just for him existing. If I summon these two, I get three sacks of Flesh of the Master. We can zoom in there so you guys can see. So the more minions we get, the more this builds up and up and up. So the more minions I have, the tankier I am. And if I go into Shroud at the same time, I'm now in a tanky Shroud with Flesh of the Master. You could just see how like super sustainy you get as a Protected. Necromancer. With all of your minions around. Uh, so yeah, that's Flesh of the Master. It's really fun. In Guild Wars 1, as you summoned new minions, you had an active effect telling you how many were alive. And well, this is kind of how you get that in Guild Wars 2 also. Uh, so yeah, alright, there you go. Back up to the Onfalus Chamber. Guys, we've got news about Khaled Bog. And that news really is that we found it. We've recovered it. And uh, Paul Wayne, unfortunately, was kind of caught in the crossfire. But he seemed like a bit of a douche. So whatever, screw that guy. Wayne is not the only villain in this tale. We must bring down Mazdak. Killing a lich is no easy matter. It will require significant planning. Every creature has a weakness, even Mazdak. If we have the knowledge, we will know where to strike. Welcome, Herald. Join our circle. There is much to explain. Oh, I'm sure there is, Traherne. Okay, guys. We got a lich to take down. Greetings, my courageous Herald. I have heard news of your victory. Khaled Bolg is returned at last. It was difficult, but worth it. Wayne's been punished at last. Harold, my research at the Priory proved fruitful. I know where Mazdak the Accursed was buried. And I believe I know his next target. He's planning to attack a human town known as the Ascalon Settlement. If we don't stop him, he'll wipe them out. He's attacking Ascalon Settlement. They're a peaceful area. They have very few defenses. We've got to stop Mazdak. We have the soldiers. If the Pale Tree would allow Khaled Bolg to be born into battle, the Vigil can destroy Mazdak. All it takes is firepower, courage, and a direct assault. You always think in a straight line. 
Look, Maztak's forces will have to move through the Centaur tribes to get to Ascalon's settlement. Why not turn them against each other and take down two birds with one stone? The Order of Whispers could do that easily. I know where Mazdak was buried. The Priory could explore his tomb, get past the traps, and find a way to destroy the Lich while he slumbers. It's the logical approach. This Lich must be destroyed. For Rianok. For Tyria. Listen to me. The Orders wish you to join them. If you do, they will lend you strength. With their backing, we can defeat Mazdak. It is your destiny to fight Zaitan. Joining an Order will help you achieve that goal. Choose wisely. Herald, I place Kaladbolg in your care. Decide how to defeat Mazdak, and know that the hopes of the Grove go with you. Alright, so we get the choice. Now, uh, let's just speak to Kate and take stock. She says, Mazdak... Uh, Kate being remarkably quiet this story step, you'll notice, and that will be resolved. Uh, she says, Mazdak has Rhiannoch's blood on his hands. It's beyond time we ended his foul existence. Wow. Uh, the Avatar of the Tree says, My brave Herald, it's time for you to defeat Mazdak the Accursed and begin the wild, the journey of your wild hunt. Which order should I pick, Mother? Fear not. I know you will choose wisely. All three are capable. All three have great respect for you. Thank you for your trust, Mother. And Traherne? The Orders of Tyria compete for your membership? Impressive. I'm certain that no matter your choice, you will do well. This is very humble coming from Traherne, who we know also is in that position. What about you, Traherne? Are you going to join one? No, I think not. My road is a solitary one. After Mazdak's defeated, I must return to studying ore. I still have much to learn. So, here we are, here we understand it. Trans back briefly, but he will now return to ore after this is done uh, on his own. No, I mean, the Orders want to fight Zaitan, but people don't want to be at ore, really. He's kind of nuts for being able to survive out there on his own. And, uh, yeah, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. I understand. So, the tree will not guide us. Well, I actually really like this step as well. All three of the instances that the uh, game provides are really fun. Uh, they're all really interesting. Um, I guess it depends what Caraflower wants the most. Now, she's had a little bit of... She's had no experience with the Vigil, really. And I, I can see Silvari in the Vigil. I can see the Silvari in all of these, really. Least likely the Order of Whispers, though, I must admit. She says, the Order of Whispers could use another cunning agent ready to fight the darkness. Will you join us? But what about Mazdak? I am interested. Uh, with a little blackmail, we can have the settlement evacuated. It will only take a small push to get the local centaurs to take over. How does that help us? Centaurs are tough, vicious fighters. When Mazdak's undead comes, we'll let the two forces decimate each other and take on the legend stuff. So, we've been to the As Ascon settlements. Caraflower even has just walked through the Ascon settlements from Lion Sarge before she knows what it looks like there. The centaurs do attack very frequently. And so, the idea that we could put the undead against them is really cool. Enemy of my enemy is my friend, sort of ish. Branthin. Uh, well, hold on. What also does she say about just being a member? Uh, she says, we may be subtle, but the order is dedicated. Join us and discover mysteries, conspiracies, and hidden truths. Um, right. Branthin. My friend, you must join the Vigil. With you among our ranks, we will finally be able to defeat the dragons like a fit. Some of my favorite Vigil characters in the entire story are Silvari. Uh, tell me more about the Vigil. The Vigil is a military organization. Honor, duty, loyalty, and protection of the people of Tyria. Come, stand with us. Sounds very noble, but how will the Vigil deal with Mazdak? A heavy force of soldiers meets the Lich and his Risen head on. It will take strategy and courage, but it will be glorious. And where do I fit in? You know the most about Mazdak, so you'll command the troops. What do you say? Mm, I say I need a minute to think. And finally, Eoeth with a Priory. Now, we have picked Priory a lot. We are a necromancer. We're kind of scholarly. Uh, Herald Caraflower, the Derman Priory would welcome you, your membership. We can offer so much to someone like you. I'm interested, what's your plan like? The Priory discovered Mazdak's tomb. Although it'll be rigged with traps, I'm sure we can find a way through to fight him. Traps? Define traps. Oh, the usual. Spouts of flame, secret passages, pressure plates on the floor. Do I see a little excitement in your eyes? So what do we want, guys? Well, I think, and I thought, thought very long and hard about this, and there are so many reasons why I'm going to do it this way. We, are, and if you think very carefully as well, this might be kind of revealing about some other things coming up. We are going to pick Priory. We're going to go with Eoerth. Let's explore this tomb. Uh, I think everything sounds brilliant. Sign me up for the Priory and your plan of attack. The Priory is on the you join us. We'll handle the formalities after the battle. Traherne. Will you accompany us on this adventure? Your knowledge of Orion Undead is second to none. I'm not going to join your order, but yes. 
I will lend my aid. I like how Traherne basically gets the opportunity there to voice something that no players of Guild Wars 2 do. There's always like these issues and we're like, we have the order and you kind of have to do both at once. But Traherne's like, yeah, I'll help, but I'm not going to join. Imagine like th how this story would go if there was pick an order or pick to just go solo, you know? Excellent. Such fantastic news. Gix will be so pleased that you're joining us. Gix? Who's that? Because Caraflad doesn't know. Stuart Gix is the leader of the Priory. You'll find him charming if you can get past the fact that he's an Asura. Noted. Thanks for the information. Um, Traherne hasn't changed. The Pale Tree must have, surely. Uh, no, she hasn't. Kaith, what do you think about me in the Priory? No, she's just cute. Cu she's very focused on the whole Rhiannon thing, right? And we will find out that's emotionally reverberating with her to some extent. Branthin says, you're noble Savari, Herald. No matter what, it was my honor to meet you. We barely met Brant Branthin, seriously. Uh, which is funny because she has quite unique VA compared to most characters. Um, I'm glad you've chosen wisely, Herald. Although I might have wished for another outcome. Good luck to you. That's it, guys. We are joining the Priory. And yeah, that means that uh, Caraflower will be going hand in hand with a certain Silvari named... Siren. Anyway, so our plan here is to save the Ascalon settlement of Gendaran Fields by doing like a preempt, not really, well, kind of a preemptive attack, but we're not actually going to fight at the settlement itself. So if we chose the other plans, we might actually get to know this place a lot more intimately as story would genuinely take place here. Uh, it seems like the friggin' uh, meta event might even be doing interesting stuff right now. But for us, we are instead going to leave and go north. This is an area of the world that we have not seen up till this point at all whatsoever. I could even go to the uh, upper areas of the settlement that I wanted to show you before, but we kind of ran out of time. Let's do it. Let's go up. Look, so this is still the settlement, but these are the higher areas with the graves and things. Which, you know, Caraflower is, uh, is a safari. She'd want to explore this place. You know, there's a, there's a certain level of urgency. But where life goes, so too should we. Right, guys? This place might become more interesting at night, though. I'm not sure. You can, like, bow to the graves and, uh, I think, uh, help spirits find rest and things. What's this scout say? Centaurs. They're close. I don't see much. Believe me, they're out there in force. They put a camp on the other side of the river. It's only a matter of time before they're in our laps. I'll keep my eyes open. So the Seraph are on this high perch, like, watching out across the battlefields. Look at that. What a horrible, we muddy wasteland out there that the centaurs come from. From up here, we can look down on the centaurs and keep track of their movements. So, what's going on out there? It doesn't look good. Since I've been here, I've watched them move closer and closer. They've built a camp that we call Blood Hills Camp and the gathering there. It's worrying. And we do know that that does become a bit of a problem for the people here. There is Monument Guards. This is what I really wanted to show you. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, guys. So, who is the Unknown Soldier, you might wonder? The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier memorializes all brave souls lost in the defense of Ascalon Settlement and wars against tyranny. Over the years, many have died so that others may live in freedom. Examine the engraving. Do not weep for the fallen. They stand beside us even in death. They are us, as we are them. They will not be forgotten. Ascalon Eternal and Unknown Soldiers. And we can uh, pay our respects to the Fallen. That even helps us with our heart there. So this idea of a tomb to an Unknown Soldier, you guys, the more learned among you maybe, um, uh, might recognize that's actually the idea of doing a tomb to an Unknown Soldier happens quite often in the real world. I believe that there was... Uh, is, here in the UK, definitely a big memorial to the idea of the Unknown Soldier, both for World War One and Two, I think. Um, and the truth is that... Uh, a lot of the time, graves like that, they, they're, like, filled. Or, I don't know, I think there's a thing where basically they are filled with lots of bodies of people who weren't necessarily recognized or we didn't know who they were. But everyone who, like, and, and as these people are memorialized, especially, I think, for World War II, you found, like, a lot of women and children that were let, like, the families of these men who had died, uh, like, just basically got massive support from the government and things, and they basically had this big joint funerary <laughs> oh, sort of service to honor them. Uh, so it is kind of a common thing. I'm not too de uh, great with the details, but it is a common thing in the real world, and it's interesting to see Terrier sort of uh, following along with that just a little bit as well at the same time. All right, sneaking past these centaurs here. I really don't want to get into a massive fight. But I guess we can show off Flesh of the Master a little bit more, right? So let's build up our army. So we got four stacks there, five stacks. Now, this Sylvan Hound is not an undead minion. So if I cast that, we won't get Flesh of the Master from it. So what do you guys say? Maybe... Oh, we might not have enough hero points just yet. We'll have to see. Hold on. Let's take these to Mini up. 
if I can, I might take the time to get one oh. more undead minion as well. So let's go to our minion training. Uh, yes, and we can. For 13 points, we can buy the final two skills. One of them being the elite, the Flesh Golem. Which, in Guild Wars 1, was an elite uh, minion. So let's summon him. He's this big, scary guy here. Uh, in the original game, they were like higher level, tankier, more dangerous. He cripples and knocks down on command. So his uh, ability is called charge. And if I press this, he rips all like movement impairing conditions off of himself and charges really far. Anyone that gets hit by that gets massive break bar damage or massive CC basically just thrown on them. They all get knocked down. It's 10 separate hits. It's extremely powerful. And he doesn't die when you use it. So he's not like these little guys that blow up. You can keep him up. And he gives us another stack. So six, if we go all minions, is kind of like the baseline, uh, which is kind of great. In fact, I can show you what this looks like, killing a few more Tamini here as uh, we charge on through and get closer. So, Mazdak's tomb is nearby. Um, one thing I find really interesting is what maybe some other big undead attacks were going on at the time that we also could have attributed to Mazdak, but the Silvari just never sort of became accustomed to. So here, let's use the charge on him. Ready? Boom. You see, we knock him down, and he actually took like three packets of damage there all at once. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I like the idea that maybe some of the human stories were somehow entangled with this. The Silvari just sort of didn't realize it at the time. That would have been really good. But here we go. So the Provence Shore. Now, there's a waypoint that you might recognize way off in the distance. Still very far away, but you can get an early glimpse of it. That's the Vigil Headquarters over there, guys. Uh, there's a waypoint towards there as well, which I can't be bothered with. There's a Norn standing outside this tomb. Oh, Traveler. Bah! I thought I'd finally gotten away from everyone, but still, you people are always bothering me, asking questions about the crypt, like you think you'll make it out alive. Crypt? There's a crypt down those stairs, but don't go running down there. It's riddled with traps. Hidden traps. The first ones will cut your journey short, and maybe even cut you in half. So how do I get through there? <laughs> Where's the fun in telling you that? This guy's insane. What? Why would you just let people die who come past you? You look like you've got some life in you. You might even think you make make it through the first hallway. Can you? Can't you give me a hint? All I'll say is there is a mighty angry spider down there, and you probably don't want to wait for her eggs to hatch. Break them as first if you can. Of course, it won't help much if you don't reach her. More <laughs> interesting. So yeah, this is one of the mini dungeons. This is not the first mini dungeon. Uh, Casey actually found a mini dungeon in Dredge Horn at the end of one of the videos, but that's another one. We are going to explore it uh, in the story step. Dead of Winter. Quite creepy. Hey guys, Traherne, Kate wandering in. I love this this moment here. The devs don't often do that, but if they have the NPCs, your allies, walking with you as you come in, it feels so much more immersive. That was badass. Hey everybody. Elite Silvari crew here. There's a sleeping lich inside. Welcome, novice. Today, you get your first taste of the adventures inherent in being a member of the Dermond Priory. I'm so excited for you. The Tomb of Mazdak. I couldn't have asked for a better trial of your abilities. I'm looking forward to it. So, what should we expect within the crypt? A challenge. Our small but clever team will be following your lead. We'll need to find Mazdak's chamber within the tomb. Once there, we will find a way to defeat him. I'm certain of it. This tomb is ancient. It may even date back to the spread of the first human settlers on Tyria. Such places are filled with traps and other dangers. We must enter cautiously. I'm ready for this. I swear by Kalidbog's thorn, we will defeat Mazdak. Okay, right, yes, a very ancient tomb. Now, we've heard, I'll let's see if Eoweth speaks. So he's, he's wondering how to get inside, he's scratching his head over there. Is he going to say something and interrupt us in the middle of our amazing lore anecdote? All right, so, yes, we've heard the rumors before that humans may not even be native to Tyria. Right now, they're in Kryta. 250 years ago, they were also in Asklon. 260 years ago-ish, uh, they were in Orr. Uh, we also know that they've been much further south. They've been in Cantha, they've been in Alona. But the idea is that humans may have been brought to this planet by their gods. And so there is a question of where did the humans first touch down? And well, we're going to get a little bit of a hint to that in this instance. Because where were, basically the question is where were they before they were in Kryta? 
Uh, what's going on, guys? Johan here says, we're sure to be tested both physically and mentally. Stay by EOS side. He was wise beyond, he's wise beyond his years. I'll keep that in mind. Glad to have you with us, Johan. I like how he's complimenting him. You'll notice if we click Johan, he's a legendary NPC. Eoerth isn't. He's veteran. Legendary. Just like Kaith. Two of the firstborn right here with us. I'm sure so many Savari would geek out at this. They'd love the idea of this. We'll find the monster in his lair and destroy Mazdak where he sleeps. Rianok will finally be avenged, we say. Right, Earworth, what's going on? So it's like an interactable gate, it seems. Do we just press F on it? Is there a secret pressure pad or something? How do you show respect to a door? Bring it flowers? I'm not sure. Any ideas? Bowing is a sign of respect. Maybe try that. So when we interact, it says only those who show respect may enter, which is why he's saying that. Okay, uh, Guild Wars occasionally does this, not very often, but yes, uh, there are emotes in the game, obviously. That's what I, you know, when we start the episodes and I'm talking like this and you suddenly think that this oh-so-manly British man actually looks like Caraflower because of the amazing lip sync that's going on right now. Those are emotes, so here it's teaching us to press slash bow. Keep your wits sharp, champion. We'll need them. And in we go. Oh my god, they're, they're going in so fast. Oh, we got to resummon our minions here as well. So there's Risen. Risen in an ancient Crichton tomb. Well, that doesn't make much sense, does it really? Not unless Mazdak himself is here, obviously, and he's been summoning and bringing them here. So these Risen are probably quite fresh corpses, I'd say. Brought from elsewhere in Crichton. Or maybe Mazdak rose these out of the bodies he found near him after he awoken. Be cautious. This entire ruin is prone to collapse. God, I love... Oh, my God. He just charged through? What a nutter! Jesus. Kate there teleported across and Traherne did. So, what? Can we walk? Oh, ow, 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 ow. Okay. <laughs> you guys might think that was staged or something. It's totally not. Right. If we look at the ground here, you will see, just as the Norn warned us outside... So, oh, I didn't even stand on it there. I guess my minions are standing on them. Oh, God. That's so bad. Okay. We're fine. Uh, yeah, there's pressure pads, and we don't want to stand on the pressure pads. That would be bad. <laughs> it seems to be lighting these gargoyles of fire that spray fire on us there. That's uh, that's kind of nasty. Jesus, we were warned, and we've just gone charging in when we're supposed to be delicate with minions. Let's try and use life transfer here to rebuild a bit of our health. And use our focus to get some regeneration on ourselves with the uh, the scythe. Okay, Jesus, they're all going on ahead again straight away. Well, yeah, good job. Thank you, Traherne. Right, I'm still a little bit scared. Let's go back to Death Magic and get another one of our um, perks. So another major trait is this one here. Archaeology is dangerous work, but a clever mind can keep you safe. I see no enemies. Why do you call it dangerous? The danger is in the things one cannot see. God, look, they're all teleport. Look at these minions triggering the traps. This is so bad. All right, uh, we're going to grab this. This is Necromantic Corruption. Extremely simple. So, our minions now do more damage. They hit 25% har harder, which is not bad. That's a big buff, right? All of them doing that much more. We're going to be really hitting things meatily now. But in addition to that, since that's not enough, all on its own, the devs also have it that this, that minions always take conditions off of us. So, if I get hit by one of these traps and start burning, one of my minions will take that burning off of me and put it on them. Not super super fast all the time they do it at an interval at once every 10 seconds but they they take our conditions and as the minions attack they then spend those conditions that are on them onto our foes so if i get burning the burning can be taken by the flesh golem and then when i use the charge on the golem he charges through and takes the burning from himself onto the enemy so that's like what Necros do. They bounce conditions all over the place. And this just means passively, again, we're even tankier, really, because now condition damage doesn't even hurt us that much. We get all this toughness to reduce flat blows, and the conditions hit us way less. So that's great. Uh, let's just dodge through here, though, because I'm very scared. Ooh, these designs. pre -Crichton. This might have been the tomb of an ancient king. Well, didn't we already kind of figure that out, Eowyth? I'm pretty sure we kind of did. It's very nice. I, I adore that echoey sound effect they put on his voice while we're in here. Doors enchanted. It won't open. Can you see any way to get through? Uh, I sure can't, Traherne. The pale tree guides you. He says the same thing. I'm glad to have you. Uh, she says the same thing. She just wants revenge for Rhiannoc. Uh, you'll be an excellent novice. I expect you to flourish. Right, okay. Well, so what do we got on this one? Only a sworn protector of Kryta may open these hallowed gates. I'm not a sworn protector of Kryta. What? 
So how exactly do we deal with this? Uh, on the top right, it says locate the inner sanctum of Mazdak the Accursed. Knowledge is the greatest treasure. Well, EOS says Swarm Protector? Cryon Ancestry, perhaps? Well, that's difficult. I'm not a Swarm Protector of Cryo. What do we do now? I guess we need to find someone who is, yes. Worth a try. What do you mean? Who is a Swarm Protector of Kryta? Well, coming back here, we do have this tomb. And you notice the quest marker actually leads us here as well, which we can now interact with. And it's a ghost. Hello. Captain Bragan? Please don't hurt me. You dare disturb the tomb of Mazdak, mighty conqueror of old? Hear me, ghost. Your master Mazdak has been corrupted by an ancient evil. We must pass. We wish to end his blight, but this enchanted door bars our path. Will you help us, Protector? Corrupted? By what foul force? Speak truth, interloper, or I will know. By the Elder Dragon Zaitan. He has stolen your lord's body and turned his spirit to evil. This is dark news. Mazdak was once lord of these lands, serving the people and the gods. To hear he has now become a servant of evil. I will aid you, travelers. I will show you the path safely through the tomb. Thank you, Captain. We'll end the dragon's corruption and make this right. God, we're going right. We're going quite explicitly against Zaitan here. So he does his, like, animation thing. Uh, and look, he's got some ghostly archers here. These guys are bowing. This is pretty badass. Are you guys just going to get us through the door? Uh, you know, Zaitan in put this lich here to sow havoc. And we are just going right against that here. So down. Fasten to these old tombs. It takes a ghost to be the... Well, be wary. This corridor is trapped. You must walk as softly as a ghost. Hold back, friends. I have an idea. Oh, do you, Trahan? Oh, he's casting some kind of a spell. Oh, no, he's created his own minions. Look, 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 Trahan's got his own minions there. Whoa. Let's do better, shall we? Don't want to end up like my poor minion. Well said, Trahan. Careful feet, everyone. Careful feet. Okay. Wow. That's really cool. Um, See, look, we, Trahan's so useful, even if he's not fighting with us. So... <sighs> What's the idea here? Are we meant to avoid the red rings or does doing the walk emote here? Um, and again, because the game asked us to emote before, so I'm wondering if they've got some special stuff. My minions are not getting hit so hard. Uh, let's see. I'm going to walk into this trap and see how much damage it does. Does it do any? Oh, it did zero. But mind you, uh, my minions are just procking it. I'm just... Oh, no, no, no. Walking doesn't save us. But if our minions go first, we're kind of okay. I'm going to hide in Shroud now because I feel like I need the extra health. <laughs> Hiding in Shroud also means I get to preserve my out of combat status and continue regenerating. Uh, so great. Okay, guys. May the gods of Ara watch over us. To battle! May the gods of Ara watch over us. Ara, guys, was a city of the gods. It's where the gods lived, but it was a, uh, the holy capital of Or. That very dead land, way before it was under the sea, way before Zaitan rose it back up. It was a land of the gods, and that's exactly how he knew it. These are old humans, very old, who uh, came from a time where the gods still lived on Tyria with humanity and favoured them, watched over them. It's just so cool to hear him say that. Uh, yeah, but A-bombs, terrible minion, uh, minions of Zaitan. Ow, he charged me and actually did quite a lot of damage there. Let's life transfer him before he takes us out. There we go. That creature was an abomination, but it was definitely not the Lich. That was a creature of darkness. It had no place within this sacred tomb. Where you find one of those creatures, you often find more. They rarely travel alone. If so, then they may be in the next chamber. That way lies the crypt of my master, Mazdak. Come, I will lead the way. Okay, you will lead the way, will you? Kaith is more interested. I think that they're more leading. I don't know, they're all going. So, uh, I'm not quite sure how this goes. There is more to explore over there. I'm wondering if the story will take us there or not. Uh, let's see. So, everybody's just slowly walking over. And this is the entrance. Don't see any pressure plates or anything. God, I love this Tomb Raiding instance. So nice. So, we got another sealed door. Earth leaning against it, wondering what's going on. Okay, dude. What, what are we looking at here? Seize the moment. Well... They sacrifice their lives in our darkest hour. Light will honor them in kind. They, what the people buried within, light will honor them? Huh. 
Reagan says, I do not know your race, strange one, but if you are an ally to Kryta, then my sword is at your disposal. Yeah, these these are the Savari are only 25 years old, so probably a lot of people would say, I don't know your race. But these humans certainly wouldn't have known about the Savari. Can you tell me more about this place? This is the crypt of Mazdak, the royal son of Or, who came to these shores so that humans may raise a new nation, Kryta. Amazing, the origin of Kryta. My children and their children served Kryta and its throne. I do no less than death. So Mazdak, this this lich, Mazdak was an Orion, guys. All those years ago, prob perhaps even from Ar Ara. So you got Ara in Or, the gods living in Or. The, the humans live here. Perhaps this was where the gods first introduced humanity to the world. And we hear that Mazdak came to Kryta. And was a great man from that. So that, that's what happened. It's interesting and actually contradictory to some earlier story we heard in the first game. Which was that Kryta was originally founded as a colony of Alonan humans. Who were all the way down here and that they'd sailed up. So which story is actually true is kind of hard to tell. Or maybe both are true. But this seems, uh, you know, he's an old enough ghost that he probably knows a little bit of what he's talking about. Trust your instincts. Uh, okay, so trust my instincts. Well, what are they saying? That they sacrifice their light in our darkest hour, light will honor them. And I see lots of empty lights here. So it says, the torch won't light. An inscription mentions bones of the ancestors. Okay, so I should look for bones nearby. And they all say that the same. So, uh, over here, the story will take us this way. Now, in open world, things are a bit different. You actually find a giant spider to fight in here, which is what that Norn was talking about. Uh, in fact, there's cobwebs webs and things around. Uh, but yeah, if we sneak through, look at this. Speaking of spiders, there's still quite a few around. Perhaps he was talking about these ones. But down here, you'll see there are a few different things. Oh, maybe just the one thing we can pick up, actually. A few directions we can go. The Ancestor's Bone back here. And there's another one there. Uh, so using this... I mean, it's kind of funny. The, the game could have just had this be a torch we pick up, right? We're actually just holding a bone just straight up here. This could have been a torch and then we light the torch. But instead, they do it with ancestors' bones to show that there's a bit of magic going on. And indeed, I think when we light them, you'll see why. Oh, green sparks begin to flicker in the brazier. Green ones. So strike the brazier with the bones. Place the bones inside it or wave the bones near it in a ritualistic manner. Let's try the bottom one. Nothing happens. Damn it, we're a necromancer. We should know this stuff. Uh, place them inside. Success. The torch lights. So it's actually green fire here, you see. Uh, okay, good. But we got a lot of torches and only one bone there. Let's grab some um, uh, locusts to help us out. And uh, yeah, I think Caraflower is very well suited to this. She's get through this perfectly fine. Oh, this spider's back. Very rarely, if ever, do NPCs respawn in story instances in this game. That was true in Guild Wars 1 as well. If you were doing like a campaign mission, in fact, it, it, the idea of respawning at, at all was not really a thing in Guild Wars 1 unless, except, except in very specific quests. In the original game, there were like achievements you could do for vanquishing, killing everything in an entire area. Uh, and Guild Wars 2, as far as the story is concerned, is still the same. But obviously, as an open world MMO, it's a bit different. So there you go. Now we've learned we can light that one. We can light that one. We can light this one. This one. And finally. This should be Mazdak's actual tomb. Prepare yourself for the worst. Oh, I am. I can see him. He's right there. He's not alone either. So he's got a risen brute with him. Mazdak the Accursed. Uh, oh, are you worth actually helps out? He says, light the darkness seems straight enough. Straightforward enough. I'm not sure what do you think it means. Light means fire. So we can set fi something we can set fire. Yeah, I figured out, dude. Don't worry. So, yeah. Uh, he has got determined on him, which means he's invulnerable. His brutes are crippled, so they move quite slowly. But uh, we've got a boss fight, it seems. Mazdak, you're going down. Silvari, here? You have long roots for such small weeds. Flee. While you still have your lives, when the human race was as young as your own, I conquered these lands and named them Kryta. Now I recognize these markings. Mazdak brought the first human settlers to Kryta from Or. No wonder he's so powerful. As a mortal, he lived in Or, while the dragon slept, hidden deep beneath the ground. You may have once been a hero, Mazdak, but now you're nothing but Zaitan's slave. We don't fear you. Ah, but you should. Know this before you die. No weapon forged can harm me. You face your doom. I carry a weapon that was never forged, Mazdak. Perhaps you recognize this blade. Calibolk. I thought it was destroyed long ago. Very well, Silvari. 
Let this be a battle to the death and beyond. Then if the adventurers come fight me. Oh, here we go. And look, we get the ally. The ghosts are helping us as well. This is so cool. So he summons a lot of extra minions. So let's start fighting. Wait, hold on. I need to drop the bone. There we go. We start fighting. Uh, you might be a little bit wondering, how does he recognize Silvari? Remember, that's probably not the human. That's probably as a lich he recognizes them because he freaking killed Rianok. So he at least knows something about them. But it would be very weird to see Silvari from here. But what is so cool here, guys, is we actually do get the sword. We're wielding colored bug. Look at this. I didn't realize we had this here. Uh, so we get lots of different abilities. Daybreak Blade, um, which turns into Flashing Arc, which turns into Daybreak Blade again. Uh, so we can slash our foes like mad on the auto. The skill 2, this is exactly what we saw Wayne was using, by the way. Electrolyze, this uh, ranged lightning bolt that comes out and we can keep spamming. The skill 3 is called Skyfall. It's a massive knockdown. And you saw we critically hit there for a ton of damage. Here you can see Twilight Crash. Knock back all targets in front of us. So we can do that to Mazdak. Who's already getting cooked quite low from everyone else. And finally, Maelstrom Strike. Thrash foes around you in a spinning frenzy while flinging projectiles. I will break and you oh my god, he feared us away. Uh, so yeah, this is awesome. There are actually quite a few different moments depending on the choices you make. Think to avenge your dead kinsman, you will fall as we did. Where you can wield Khaled Bog. Uh, but this is one of the cooler ones. Mazdak, you're going down, man. Oh my god, the fear. We can use Electrolyze when he fears us from range. The touch of that sword is like fire. This cannot be. Oh, it seems he's pretty good at taking out dragon minions, huh? Oh my god, he just summoned a ton more stuff right at the end. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. So the five is a really meaty hit that you can't move while using. And down he goes. He's out. Good job, Kaith and Traherne. I mean, he stands no chance with these firstborn and Khaled Bog. This is very different to just Wayne with a little boy. <laughs> Mazdak the Accursed is dead. By the blade of Khaled Bog, Rianok is at last avenged. Novice, you've shown both intelligence and courage. I rate your performance as exceptional. You should head to Lion's Arch and receive your first formal assignment. It's time to send you out into the field. Thank you. I'll leave soon. Kaith, you're so quiet. Are you injured? No, I'm thinking. Rionok died before he could fulfill his wild hunt. He failed because he was alone. If we wish to fight Zaitan, we must not let fear or anger force us apart. If we do not find a way to defeat the dragons, Tyria will be destroyed. Tell me, my friend, do you think... Do you think it's possible for people to let go of their differences? To unite? Our dreams inspire us, Kaith. We must never give up hope, or we give up the dream itself. Then I must also go to Lion's Arch. It is time to call together Destiny's Edge. By your leave, my friend, I'll return Kalad Bolg to the Pale Tree. I'll be sure to tell her the tale of Mazdak's defeat. Will I see you again, Traherne? Yes, I'm sure of it. Our wild hunts are linked, my friend. We will need one another. May your path be filled with adventure and joy. Until we meet again. And of course we know we will meet him again after he discovers a particularly immense attack on Claw Island. I just wish it wasn't under such terrible circumstances. Eoerth. May your knowledge flourish. Well done, novice. I shall write a glowing review of your performance and set it on Gix's desk immediately. Gix, again, this is the third time we've asked this. Ranked incomparable genius in the Asura Colleges, twice awarded the Meritorious Service Medal of the Iron Legion. Steward Gix is the leader of the Demon Priory. It's like everyone spouts this in the Priory. They all know exactly what Gix's accomplishments are. He's an Asura, isn't that a little strange? Not at all. His intellectual brilliance led him inevitably to the Demon Priory. He's a bit grumpy, but astonishing nonetheless. What's the next step now that I'm a member of the Priory? You'll head to Lion's Arch to meet your mentor, a tutor assigned to train you in Priory methodology. Mentor? Who will that be? I don't know, but I'm sure Gix will choose wisely. Your mentor's advice is critical to establishing your future in the Order. And you know what? I reckon we get on with Siren quite well. Here's Traherne. He says, I shall carry Khaled Bog back to the Pale Tree and tell her of this battle. Bless you, Herald. Khaled Bog is a fine weapon, and I'm honored to have carried it. And we just gave it back to him there. Our skills just swapped back, if you saw. Perhaps in the future, he says, we will see it again. For now, I'm glad it's safe in the mother's bowels. So what will the mother choose to do with the, the sword now that it's returned? I mean, one great idea, I think, would be to give it to Kaith. 
if Rhianoc was supposed to use it to defeat minions of the dragon, maybe even the dragon itself, surely since the dream gave Kate the world hunt to take out Zaitan, she should have it. Uh, so yeah, we get uh, a lot of crazy good stuff, as we all know from the level 30 thing. And um, yeah. Uh, we can also say, he said, no, uh, if you should need me, there's a typo here. We'll ignore that though. I will be there. Our wild hunts bring us closer together once more. You should come with me. No, I think not. I have more research to do in awe. You'll do well on your own. I know it. Take care, Trahan. What will happen to Caladbog, do you think? Well, I will return the sword to the Pearl Tree if it's needed. I'm sure we'll see it again. Okay. Uh, Eoerth, I think we missed something. Kate wants to meet me in Lion's Arch first. Is that alright? He says, of course. The Priory completely understands that you have side projects. You can meet your mentor after that business is done. I love how that he calls this a side project. Listen, Josia. Um, this is not Josia that we're speaking to. Clearly copy-pasted dialogue from somewhere else in the game. Listen, Eoerth. We, um, we, we, this is not a side project. Bringing Destiny's Edge back together is possibly huge. Uh, hey, Captain Bregan. Uh, he says the same. I guess, look, you're revenge. You're happy now, though, right? You should be feeling pretty good. Where is Kaith? Is she just charged off? I guess she has really, really got on her mind to go back to Lion's Art. She is super, super, super eager. And, of course, that's, uh, that's really, in my opinion, the biggest piece of the puzzle about the Lion's Arch meeting. You know, Kaith is the one that messages. Everyone else only comes because they get a message from Kaith. And other things make them think on it or whatever. But Kate now goes, writes letters to everyone. Writes one to Logan, who, you know, muses, oh, it's like she doesn't realize anything's changed. Writes one to Ritlock. Writes one to everyone. Um, and it's really Rhianoc and realizing that a Silvari can die before fulfilling their wild hunt. She could die before fulfilling hers. That really scares the bejesus out of her. So there you go. Um, that is another level gained as well. And now we can go to Lion's Arch and get the, uh, next part of the story underway. So, did I not get a single waypoint in Lion's Arch? It looks like I didn't somehow when we went through the Asura Gate. So that's like, why am I in combat as well? What? I have two bleed on me. Why do I have two bleed? Did I somehow inflict that on myself? Oh, I did with the three, the Dark Pact. Whoops. I must have accidentally clicked that. All right. So I'll see you guys in LA. Look at the little boy sitting over here and just sort of looking out of the water. That's really cool. Do you have any dialogue? I guess he doesn't. Uh, so there is another thing as well I want to talk about, and that's our final death magic trait, uh, which is really, really, really awesome. Again, a Guild Wars 1 skill reference. It's a Grand Master, and as you guys remember, the Grand Master traits are the truly obscene ones. So over these past couple of episodes, you've just seen me get more and more ridiculous with the minions. And, well, the final thing now uh, you can see. So the Grand Master here is called Death Nova. Death Nova was a skill in Guild Wars 1, an enchantment you could cast on your minions that meant when they died, they exploded in a horrendous massive packet of damage. Well, here it is in Guild Wars 2, Death Nova. When you or one of your minions is downed, create a lesser poison cloud. So, yes, that's uh, basically what's happening here. If I summon my little minions now, your time has come I can press this button to explode them, as the skill does. But after they explode, Death Nova also creates this poison field here which itself can be procced by blasts. So you see when I blow up a minion, it creates a field at its feet, which then blows up at the same time. So we pulse weakness out, we do all kinds of stuff. And every single one of my creatures now, when they die, will do the same. When I eat my blood fiend, he also drops the field, yeah? Uh, and when the other guys just die through natural causes, they also will create the field. So there's that. And then again, just like here with the Necromantic Corruption, it did two things. The damage increase and the con condition transfers. This also does two things. You get the Death Novas, but also another Guild Wars 1-y thing. Uh, this is um, Jagged Horrors. So now whenever like an enemy dies near us... Mini minions will spawn so we get even more than just our utility skills. Those are jagged horrors We summon a jagged horror whenever we kill a foe So basically the way this works is they're constantly dying, but they can come out You can get about two 
in addition to your regular minions at all times. So as long as you're constantly killing stuff, you get even more minions. And those Jagged Horrors also give you more stacks of Flesh of the Master. Those mini Jagged Horrors will also proc Death Novas. Uh, the whole works. So, uh, and I think they'll even get the protection from Beyond the Veil. So that is Death Magic. That is Minion Mancy. And there's even more we can do as we get later into the game and we get out of this extremely low level starter gear and we start getting more sigils and runes and things which all can do more things for summoning and I'm excited to show you all. But with that said, let's head into LA and see the meeting. All right, here we go. So speak to your friend in setting the stage. Uh, we have everybody sort of wandering around here and uh, this time we will speak with none other than Kaith. It's been so long since I've seen them together. This will work. It must. Uh, one other thing, by the way, there's two more NPCs. The final two NPCs I want to speak to here. Uh, this will be the last time we visit this area. Uh, here we got Lindsay Morrill, who says, Isn't this fountain amazing? I could watch the water play for hours. And we say it's a memorial fa fountain. Who was it made to honor? The rebirth of Lion's Arch. After the original city was drowned by the swell of the Sea of Sorrows, it was rebuilt to be even more spectacular than its namesake. The plaque says... From ruin we prosper. Who built it? Originally there was just the lower pool, built by the human pirates who first settled here after the tides withdrew, using stones salvaged from the original Lion's Arch. Who built the rest? As each new race arrived, they added to the fountain. The Char sculpted the lion at the center. The Norn crafted the smaller figures on the edge. The Asura designed the mechanics and the Silvari the water flow. And now it's finished? No, it continues to evolve. The Tengu, the Hylic, the Centaurs, the Quaggan, every race has on its arrival here added something new to create the marvel of cooperation that you see now. So yeah, we as the Silvari doing the waterworks, hopefully we've got immaculate context now for this uh, very, very cool uh, fountain. So yes, Kate, let's see how it goes again. And for the first time, since the first time we saw this, I'm going to let you guys watch it all. Welcome, fellow members of Destiny's Edge. We must speak of the threat of the Elder Dragons. When I agreed to come, I didn't know you'd be inviting this char. I could say the same for you, human. Finally crawling back for forgiveness, Logan. I've done nothing that needs to be forgiven. Logan, Ritlock, enough of your squabbling. Kaith, I doubt that we can unite again. Not after our last mistake. The Norn's right. When heirs to Galkin makes mistakes, people die. Is that what you think, Soja? That what happened was my fault? Please, all of you. Our time has come. We must help the Orders. We have fought the Elder Dragons before. And lost. Because someone couldn't keep up with us. You have something to say, say it to my face. I would if you weren't always running away. I should gut you and be done with it. Gut me? With what? That human-made sword you looted from Ascalon? I've had enough. We're done here. Running away again. Ritlock, you're just making it worse. Ha! Look who's talking! Logan's right, for once. I have more important things to do. I'm done with this. And I refuse to waste my efforts on cowards and fools. Goodbye, Keith. It's sad to see Logan and Ritlock argue. If only there was something to bond them together. Yes, I know what might help. Keith, I have to leave as well. I fear this meeting was a mistake, but maybe I can fix it. We failed, then. Failed to bring Destiny's Edge back together. We cannot help the others. How can we help Tyria? Man, it really, really, really stings there. Just to see how deeply Kaith probably wanted that and how miserable it went. At least you got an ally in air here, though. Arguably now the most mysterious of these characters. Everyone's still standing here. In the other versions, I believe that they all run off. But here they're all still standing around. Kaith says they are frozen in that moment. That one second when we split apart. Why can't they move beyond it? I don't understand. A death leaves a wound in the survivors. As the pale tree mourned when Rianuk died, so too do they mourn. She says they're wasting time while the dragons grow stronger. I must find a way to make them see. We will. You're not alone, Kaith. Not alone. Because you're here. Yes, I will hold on to that. Through the long nights ahead. Take care, my friend. You will hear from me soon. I'll be waiting. So hold on, guys. 
We know where Air goes to try and get the sword. We know that Ritlock runs after her. We know that Zodja goes to figure out what was just selfishly to go figure out what was going on with Snaff. We know that Logan goes to def selfishly, I guess as well, ish, to defend the Queen at the uh, Cordicus's Manor thing, which puts Zo 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 Zodja and Logan together. But what exactly does Kaith do after all this? Well, so I think at this point now, guys, we have seen every single bit of dialogue in this instance, except one miscreant random NPC that I have to find. So I'm going to cut until I find him. Uh, we're going to follow Logan up here. He should be on a gangplank or something somewhere. We will find him. So just give me a second, guys. He's a char. Oh, that's so frustrating, by the way. Look at that. There's a there's a Silvari over there called Elaine, who does have dialogue, but she exists outside of the map boundary, so I'll never know what she says since we can't speak to her anymore. That's so irritating and fascinating and amazing in some ways. I may sneakily have to go wiki that later. Uh, I'm not going to lie. i got to know what she says. Ah, oh, here he is. Here he is. Wow, wow. What a coincidence. He was right here anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's Lion Guard Atrix. He says, ah, oh, you're a welcome sight. My captain put me on gangplank duty for insubordination. Not many pass by, so I've had no one to talk to. I think this NPC was moved at some point. Interesting bit of trivia, those children have been moved as well. Way back when the game first came out, you would always listen to the children playing Destiny's Ed right there in front of you. But now they're missable and they've been moved off to the side. Um... What did you do to get gangplank duty? Pah! He was acting like a condescending dolly axe rump. So I used his engraved wooden foot locker to sharpen my claws on. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to distract you from important duty. No, no, no. It seems like... So we get a choice. Seems to me he had that coming or seems to me you had this coming. Ah, uh, a superior officer acting condescending. At the end of the day, he is your superior officer. I don't know. The Char are pretty hard and fast about this stuff. It sounds like you had it coming. I don't necessarily agree, but it sounds like you had it coming. You should know better. He says, that's how I felt. Sometimes I miss being with the Iron Legion back at the Citadel instead of here with these Lion Guard amateurs. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. He's annoyed because it's just the Lion Guard. So why did you leave the Iron Legion in the first place? Got kicked out by my Legionnaire because she was being a Marmox's behind. So I used her bow to floss my fangs and one of her arrows to scratch an itch I couldn't reach. Lion's Arch gave me a place to start over. Wait, so what, you got kicked out twice? Sounds like you may run out of places to start over. Goodbye. All right, sounds like you had it coming for sure, man. Um, so, yeah, and that's a really amazing thing to think about now. Most of the char you find out in the world now, uh, they, they've got very real reasons from being away from the Citadel, you know. Um, and we will find a great many here in pirate towns and havens like Lion's Arch. I love these buildings and these structures. Uh, so, yeah, that's it, guys. We're now going to go join the Dermond Priory. We're going to meet some familiar faces. And we're going to continue with the story. That will all be next time. Hope you've enjoyed seeing all the pieces of the puzzle for this instance come together. And it's time to progress beyond. I'll see you tomorrow. Once the Asura Gate is finished, we can set up a trading post in Lion's Arch. How do you that like seems so far away. The wall. I know, but it will the pay Sumari honor to the ancestors if we things. broaden our trade reach. They do have our weapons will sell well there. Many questions. I've heard Didn't they cook their food before eating it. Even the rats? Can I ask you a question? Yes, my ancestors could fly. No, I cannot. Now trade. We wandered for generations, looking for a home, searching for freedom. Freedom is the ultimate hunt, the most highly prized prey. You would make a good Tengu. How do you like living and working outside the wall? The Silvari make decent neighbors. They do, however, ask too many questions. I couldn't agree more.